Hey, this is Sarah. Welcome back to Never Out of Books. It is lovely to see you all again. Today I'm going to wrap up December for you. I read a lot of different genres and different things in December, so it was kind of a good end to 2018. And so I will just proceed to wrap up now for you. I read three contemporary romance novels. Um, one was in this bind up that I got in a book box and these were Rodeo Dreams and One Rodeo Season. I think these are the two books in this series, and they are by Sarah M. Anderson. These books were kind of interesting. I mean, they were typical Harlequin romances, so it wasn't, I mean, I, I think I gave them both three stars, so they were not like hugely exciting, but they were interesting because I haven't read a lot about rodeos before, uh, Western not being my typical contemporary genre. And I actually learned a lot about rodeos in this. These were also diverse books in that um, the main characters in both of these books were uh, Native American tribes people. Um, and so that was a very interesting aspect of the book. Um, three stars, nothing to write home about. They were a little bit boring at times, but um, like for the information and the knowledge that I received, they were very good books. I also read First Star I See Tonight by Susan Elizabeth Phillips. I do believe this is like the eighth book in the Chicago Stars series. I do not believe you need to read these in order or all of them um, because I certainly haven't and I thoroughly enjoyed this one. This was a four star book for me and this kind of turns things on their head a little bit that the woman, Piper, is a detective more on the private investigator side of things uh, she is trying to keep her deceased father's business going and so she has taken on this business and she is following one of the quarterbacks to protect him because she knows something is going to happen there's shady things happening so it turns it on its edge where she is the protector and he is the pro person being protected and they don't really like each other and so it's kind of a little bit of a hate to love sort of situation here. So this was delightful and fun and it was pretty spicy though. So do recognize that before you read it. Then I read a historical romance that also came in a book box, The Good, The Bad and The Duke by Jana McGregor. This is the fourth book in the Kevin Shem Aris's series. I have not read any of the previous books in this but I had this ARC copy that I got in a book box and wanted to just read it because it fit my reading challenge for G. And this one was okay. I was a little bit worried because I do not like holiday themed books, but I do like winter books. Um, and I, and particularly in historical settings where they did not really celebrate Christmas in the way that we do. And so when they start putting like Christmas celebrations in like the United States style that is today. It irks me because that is not accurate, but whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, this was, it had a little bit of a Christmassy element, but it wasn't bad. It was really just mentioned and it wasn't completely holiday themed. So that was pleasing to me. And the plot was kind of fun too, where Daphne is basically, she's 25 years old, family is all married and happy and everyone's all wonderful and she gets left behind when the family gets goes off for their Christmas celebration um, <laughs> left behind in the townhouse in London um, she has been wanting to set up her own household so she figured this was like a good time to start planning her charity and Paul who is a duke kind of helps her in her her plans even though he is someone who has caused a lot of problems for her family in the past. So this was fun. I th think I found it boring in times and I think I gave it around the three and a half star range. I don't think I'm going to go out of my way to read the author or anything like that but I did enjoy this. It was like definitely a fun premise. I read two cozy mysteries in December. The first one being Murder in an Irish Irish Village by Carleen O'Connor. This is the first in a new series. I believe the fourth book of it is coming out this year. This is about five siblings, but really focuses on Siobhan. And 
their family, their parents have died, and so the older siblings are kind of taking care of the younger siblings, and they own a bistro, and there is a murder that happens in the bottom of the bistro, and of course everyone thinks that they did it because this man was the drunk driver that killed their family, basically. So uh, I adored this. I am looking forward to reading the next books in the series. I have the second one out from the library already. Um, highly recommend. This was very good. And then I read one of my favorite books of 2018, um, The Cracked Spine by Paige Shelton. This is the first book in a Scottish bookshop mystery. I adored this. This has to be one of my favorite cozy mysteries I've, I've read in a very, very long time. And it's a kind of a complicated story to summarize, but Delaney has left the United States to go to Scotland to work at this bookshop with, owned by a very eccentric millionaire person <laughs> who <laughs> has all kinds of artifacts and she is used to be a museum curator so she's loves all these old manuscripts and something gets stolen and then there is a murder um and it's fun because she is has just arrived to the country so no one suspects her so it's kind of fun to see that but she ends up learning so much about the people by investigating this murder <laughs> and disappearance of old manuscripts so I just it was so much fun there's eccentric people just like you like in a cozy and it was fun to not have our main protagonist be suspected for the murder right in the first book so that was a change um, so I recommend this series I am liking this I am looking forward to reading the next books in it sometime this year so I can get caught up um, and I hope that some other people like this too I read this this one was good I read a more general mystery in December not that I could tell by Jessica Strasser this I got for March book of the month this is centering on like a little community a little quirky town they call it, and one of the people who is going through a nasty divorce, the woman disappears with the children, and then the husband comes back and starts causing drama, and what in the world happened, and where did she go, and the police are investigating, and you see many different sides of this story. Um, I enjoyed reading this because I kind of like that you know, the mommy drama sort of stuff that was going on here. It was pretty evident at the beginning what was going on, though. Like, I mean, it wasn't a shock. The twist wasn't a shock. I mean, anyone with a brain could probably see where it was going, but I enjoyed the writing um, in this and thought it was a pretty decent book. Um, but I do have to say, Book of the Month has not been living up to my expectations lately just saying um because this was not a five star read or even a four star this was definitely only a three star read which is you know it met my expectations and it was fine but but i don't know if this was up to to uh book of what i see as book of the month so i read a romantic suspense book hidden peril by irene hannon never heard of her before i do believe she does write christian fiction there was a little bit it was definitely clean um, but on the scope of Christian fiction, this was, this didn't like really ping my radar too much or get preachy, which I appreciate because I don't like that. This is about Kristen who owns a fair trade store in this town. Uh, they sell all kinds of very interesting things from around the world and people who shop at this, her shop start dying. And so the FBI starts getting involved and there's a police detective from town named Luke who is trying to investigate and it, it becomes this really big, big thing that's going on here. I thought this was really good. I was very impressed by this book. Well written. Um, the balance between the romance and the suspense was in my favor, which is like a little more suspenseful than 
romance. I like that. Um, I will look for more things from her, probably from the library. This, but this is this was a good book. I enjoyed. It. I believe I gave it four stars. I read a bit of paranormal this this month, um, which is not really my thing. But I picked up My Plain Jane by the three Lady Janies, Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I did not realize this was on the paranormal scheme of things, or I probably wouldn't have picked it up because that is not my not my thing. But this is a retelling of Jane Eyre, where Jane sees ghosts, basically. These books are incredibly amusing. Um, uh, it was funny. I laughed. I really, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. I'm, I don't like that ghost stuff. The book itself was very good, but yeah, not my thing, but I mean, if you like to laugh and you like fun, then it might be yours. I read four middle grade in December. Like I said, I read a lot of everything in December. Um, I finished up the first story arc of the Wings of Fire series by Tui uh, T. Sutherland. These are just excellent books. I highly recommend them for all age groups. They are wonderful. Each of these books focuses on a different dragon and the world building is amazing and the story arc is amazing as well. My favorite of these books three, four, and five was The Hidden Kingdom. Um, this is Glory's story. I, you know, they're just, I mean, I can't, without spoiling it, but there's a prophecy that there's five dragons that are gonna change the kingdom and these little dragonettes and this is the story of the five of them and how things happen. There are a lot more books in the series. I will get to them eventually, but I am glad that I finished the story arc anyway. Go read these, they're very good. And then my bummer of the year, yeah, was uh, Inkart by Cornelia Funky. I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't really like this. I hate to say it, this is like a very beloved book. It's so long. And I mean, it's, it's, it's just so long. <laughs> and it, and it felt long, I think is the problem because, you know, you can have a big long book and it go very quickly, but this just, oh my goodness, I felt like I was poking my eye out sometimes. This is Meggie and her father can read characters out of books and all kinds of shenanigans happen when he reads out this very bad person out of a book. And it sounds so good. Doesn't this book sound good? This book sounds great, but it just didn't work for me. Um, and I'm going to unhaul the next two books in the series because I'm really just not interested and I hate saying that. <sighs> oh. So, kind of ended on a bummer, but what can one say? That's 12 books in December. I cannot complain. I ended the year well. And I will see you all again later. So hope you're reading something wonderful. Feel free to say something about the books that I've read or some of your favorite books or some of the good stuff you read in December. I'm always looking for recommendations. And I will talk to you again later. Bye.